everybody, hello and welcome as always, I am Sean, this is In The Mixer, episode number 15, that time I got the fingers right, of our Pentagon Challenge. If you haven't gone and checked out last week's episodes, please go and have a look at them. It'll bring you up to date on the series, where we're at, how we travelled last year, and kind of give you guys a bit of background onto what we're doing heading into this season as well. I'm just noticing, like, the green screen is not great for this green coloured shirt, but I'm just going to be a spooky ghost for the episode. We will power on through it because we've got a whole bunch of stuff that we need to recap from the off-season and the start of a new season with some very exciting news around the club as well. So jumping in at the start, we are at the start of a new season. We're going to play Zhejiang Green Town today. That will be the kind of final to the episode, but we've got a whole bunch of stuff that we need to recap. First and foremost, the new stadium, Shenyang Urban Stadium, has opened. It opened back in January. We've had a couple of friendlies there throughout the course of the season. It's got undersoil heating, 30,000 seats. Absolutely fantastic to have that one coming through. We do own it outright as well, which is fantastic. So that's really huge for the club. I'm hopeful that now it's built, a lot of the financial issues we've been having about hemorrhaging money each season will be resolved. We are back up into positive balance, but that's because I've sold a bunch of players and I can't really continue at the current rate that we're going, having to sell half the squad each off season to get us back up into a positive position. Otherwise, we're just flying down. We do have a new ownership group, uh, which I think happened towards the back end of last season. I'm not sure if you guys actually saw that, but they are pretty much just operating under the exact same details as we were the previous seasons, which is fine. We can work with that, but hopefully most of that expenditure is done now and now the stadium's built and ready to go. We're just hopefully making profit each season. That's really what we want to focus on. Speaking of profit, transfer history, we did get rid of quite a few different talent pieces of talent. A couple late last season as well. So there's a couple of players that have disappeared from here. We ended up raising 65 million last season. I think the latest ones were Ye Hai Tao, who we got rid for 10 million pound or 10 million yuan. We got rid of Mao Yi for five as well. Zhu Yong, five also to help us kind of really like round up that last little portion. Extra 20 million last year, which really did us a whole bunch of favors. And then we had another 22 million, which we got rid of this season. Zhang Xiaolang has gone to Bin Chang in the second division, 10 million, which is great. We've managed to pick up, I think, a higher quality right back option anyway. So moving him on made sense. And Gao Moshi, who I wasn't really going to try and get rid of, but he wanted a new contract on crazy money. I didn't necessarily think he was worth it because his current ability is not where I thought it should be for the money that he was asking for. He was excellent for us last season. A very good servant. Two huge goals, I think, in the last episode as well. Been a good servant, but we let him move on and it is a club record 12 million yuan sale. So we haven't quite raised as much as the previous seasons, but some of these off-season ones were actually, you know, like for this pre-season. So we've been pretty consistently making like 40 to 50 million each off-season to try and recoup some of that losses and get us back to a positive mindset. Most of the guys that have come in are free transfers. So we're going to have a look at them mainly here as we look at the squad. Again, we've got the four Brazilians. They're all signed on. Uh, both Souza and Yonatas Yun have signed new contracts. 200K a week now. We are getting to some eye-watering amounts as far as wages are concerned. But there are some new faces that we were looking to round out the defense. One of the big areas that I was trying to improve was that back line. We had basically like two and a half, three star defenders each time. We have recruited to try and bring some more players in of quality. The biggest one, Zhu Qi, who joins us from Beijing, made 58 appearances for them. Still only 19 years of age. Looks to be absolutely fantastic. He's a no-nonsense center back, but I'm going to have him working as a ball-playing center back. One of the tactical adjustments that we've made for this season. I think he's going to be fantastic. Free transfer, already worth $32 million. He's on a fair amount of wage though 150k per week for five seasons i'm hopeful he can hit the ground running and really be a bit of a star for us because we are starting to get a lot of our like 20 21 22 year old players turning 23 24 and they're not going to hit that projected potential that perhaps we've been like putting them in the team for for the last few seasons he'll play alongside lu chun jin 25-year-old central defender that we've picked up from cheng du who were of course our adversaries for quite a while in the second division Decent player, though. Looks pretty good for this level. Three-star current and three-and-a-half-star potential ability. Again, free transfer on high wages, but $17 million already. We can recover most of that money if it doesn't work out for him. When we scouted him, when we looked to bring him, he was like a four-star, four-and-a-half-star defender. It hasn't quite worked out that way when he's actually arrived, but we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt and also play him as a ball-playing defender because he can do the role, which is great for us. We brought in Ren Ching Yi over on the right-hand side. He'll play as a right wing-back. Bai Liang last season was good, but just didn't really get to the level that I needed from him in that creative role on the right-hand side. So we're going to bring him in. He's sound defensively. He's 
Work with the ball needs a little bit of an improvement. I like crossing and dribbling aren't the greatest, but he's got good mental attributes, good physical attributes as well. If he's not working out, I will put Bai Liang back into that role. We'll just see how it goes. They're both 25, so like they're both kind of coming into their prime years. You'd think they'd be settled in this division. And given that Ching Yi has played at this level before with Jiang Su, he should be ready to go and should be ready to contribute from the off. Jiang Wei joins the midfield. We're going to move back to a ball-winning midfielder, 24-year-old. Under 20 international, two and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential. Again, another one that we brought in who I thought was going to be a bit better than he actually ended up being. There was another player actually that we were looking at named Han Wei, who I desperately tried to bring in. We threw a bunch of cash at this guy. He ended up taking less money to drop down into the second division and play with Wuhan. I can't explain it. He was at Dalian Pro, so we probably played against him last season. Four and a half star current and potential ability. He would have been fantastic for us as that ball winning role. But he was the one that we kind of missed out on this off season. I don't often miss out on like our key targets, but it was frustrating to see him go. We will move Vasil over to that Mazala role on the left hand side, which I think is a bit better for him. We had him on a private, like a custom tackling regime last season to improve that stat but it didn't quite get there still only seven so i'm thinking maybe we put aside him being that dlp on defend and we try and turn him into like a proper creative mazala where he's got a lot of the stats for it already anyway and still only 19 still got a couple more years on his contract which is pretty decent at 60k a week Hopefully, he'll continue to grow and improve the way he did last year, and we'll move on from there. Wang Ang will continue as the advanced playmaker. He's dropped off a little bit now that he's 21. I am still hopeful that we can get him to be like a three and a half, four star player by the end of this season. He was excellent for us last year, I thought. One of our better players, if he can have a similar contribution this season, I think we're going to be in great shape. And then leading the line up top, Xiao Qi Long has joined us 23 years of age. He comes across from Henan, where he played 73 times and scored 16 goals. Three and a half star current ability, four star potential. That doesn't blow anyone's mind, but what I'm very excited about is the 15 finishing. That's the part that I'm really keen to see how he actually does. As far as the pressing forward role is concerned, he's not bad at all of it. Some of his mental attributes will need a little bit of work over the course of the season as he gets comfortable in that role. But 15 finishing, 14 first touch, 13 dribbling, 15 stamina, 14 pace, 16 acceleration, 14 agility, 14 balance. Like a lot of different eye-popping stats that jump out at you throughout the period there. Composure is not terrible. Concentration maybe needs a little bit of work. But at 23, a free transfer, haven't had to pay anything for him. Even if it doesn't work out, I think his potential ability or at least his current ability, will be able to make a profit on him in 12 months' time. And it's not that I wasn't happy with Zhang Wei last season. He just hasn't quite progressed the way that I think we wanted him to. Finishing is not that great, only eight. I think we really need to try and get that proper finisher in there and in the side. So because of that, we're probably going to move Zhang Wei to be a backup defensive option this season, but his versatility is good off the bench. We have signed another striker as well in Lu Xuan, who also looks to be quite good, also has decent finishing ability. Again, working him towards being a pressing forward. He's got good bravery. He's got good anticipation. No reason that he couldn't make a push and try and start a few games if he can find the back of the net with regularity. Otherwise, though, mostly familiar faces. Uh, Liang, we already spoke about how Xiaoru Seng Jun has joined on the right-hand side just to try and get us a left-footed player on the right instead of Zhuang Jin, who is still plugging away. In our under-23s, I'm trying to get rid of him. I'm trying to get rid of Yongju as well just to try and recover a little bit more money. So far, no one has applied, but that's okay. We'll work through that as we go. Chao Dong, you saw last season. Bin, you've seen for a couple of years. And Zhu Yang is a youngster that we had coming through last season. So I'm happy with the squad. I think it's in good shape. Those couple of tactical tweaks, moving to ball playing defenders, moving a ball winning midfielder in midfield, I think are going to give us like a bit more defensive grit, which is what I think we needed last season. And again, it's the same for the possession instruction as well. We're just going to play a little bit deeper, try and focus on keeping the ball a little bit more in that style. Both are attacking. We're going to go out. We're going to try and get it. And hopefully we can capitalize or build on our fourth place finish last season. Now, we did leave off last episode trying to figure out if we were in the Champions League. Apparently, we're not. I cannot figure out why they do this decision. But apparently, if you win the Chinese FA Cup, you take that fourth spot away from someone. So Tianjin, even though they kind of sucked last year, and I think we're like 10th or after the end of the season, they have made the Champions League groups. So... Yeah, that's just the scenario that we're in. They're not playing particularly well. They got belted by Western Sydney earlier on in the group stages, but they have picked up a couple of points against Pohang and uh, Bangkok Glass and a few other teams. So frustrating that they have taken that one away from us. Now we really need to try and push on and go that little bit further and hopefully finish in those top three spots and guarantee ourselves 
Champions League qualification by way of the table. If not, the FA Cup might become very important for us. We will see how that goes during the offseason. Another big jump we've had is that we've got a whole bunch more coaching staff now. We got to add like two or three coaches during the offseason, a few recruit members, a few medical staff, and it's helped push us up to being like one of the better coach teams in the division. We were pretty poor all throughout the last couple of years, but thankfully, those couple of extra bodies that we've been able to get have helped us quite a bit. The only way I look for staff is I just look for X internationals as you start getting further and further into the future guys that have picked up international caps throughout the course of their careers and are now looking to kind of make that jump across to become coaches assistant managers whatever else strategy that served me well over the course of this series over the course of this channel so very excited to see how they'll get on this year and how they'll improve the team at the same time Preseason schedule's been up and down. We have kind of fluctuated between our attacking instruction, which is where we got a lot of these wins early on, and our counter-attacking style. Mostly just playing teams from Korea that are wanting to come across and play us, and really that's just to try and set us up to be able to beat them if we do get to Champions League group stages. Had a big defeat against Pohang, but a big win against Incheon, so you kind of take one, give the other. But I think we're in relatively good shape heading into the first game of the season. Speaking of the Super League, season preview again, we're at 1,001 odds, expected to finish rock bottom of the division. I'm not sure why that is, uh, given that we did finish top four last time out. Guangzhou, they expect to do well. Shandong, Beijing, Henan, Changchun, Shanghai, Shenhua, Zhejiang, who we're playing today are at $51. So there is a bit of a gap starting to form between like that top six and the rest of the sides in the division. Very even split between the Media Dream 11. I think Shandong has most of the players. They've got four in there. Sandro Tonali still plugging away at the center of the park in this division. But we'll see how we go. We're just we're not going to pay too much attention to this because it seems to be off each and every year. But if we can build on last year's finish, I'll be very, very happy. Now, we do actually have a full strength squad to start with. So we're going to go with our attacking style. We're going to go, even though we're away from home, we're going to really go after it in the first match. We're going to try and set down a bit of a marker for the rest of the season. I've just told everyone to go out there and enjoy themselves. And I'm giving the defense a little bit of a boost to try and uh, get the most out of them. If we get a clean sheet, I think we'll be in good shape. But really, I just want to start the season with a win. First highlight of the match is a throw-in on the right-hand side, Ching Yi. Deep ball towards back stick, and he's found Souza. So it's an excellent cross. We spoke about Cheng Yi not being the greatest in terms of his crossing and dribbling ability, but that is an absolute peach of a ball here. Yunata picks it up here from the throw, plays it back to him. He's got all the time in the world because no one comes to close him down. And that curling ball towards back stick, absolutely fantastic. And Souza on his favored left foot, side foots at home, back across the keeper. And I guess this is the first we've really gotten to say, oh, it's not our home game. Damn. So I haven't actually shown you guys the stadium. Maybe we'll have to jump into the next match and give you guys a bit of a preview as to what the stadium looks like. Headed away here, though, from the corner. Zhejiang come the other way. Cut back there was nearly on. Roque Holmes, the one that we need to watch out for here. He's a very good player. How you? Here he is, and that was the strike just beyond the near post. So there is still that danger there that they might come back at us. It's going to throw a demand more shout in there as well with about 15 minutes remaining in the half. The team seems to be relatively settled. There's a couple of knocks, a couple of yellow cards that we're going to have to be wary of out there as well. Cleared ball here to Ki, or Chi Long. First that we've really seen from him. Skipping past a couple of challenges. Can he find the cutback? It's cleared away. Jiang Wei wins it back in midfield, which is what he's been paid to do. Now Souza, 1v1, wide left area, tries to force a ball that probably wasn't there. Good one, two here with Moraes, back to Vasil, pinballing around, and I think Chin Ki has just gotten himself another goal, which is decent. I think Yunatis might have straight offside, though, and maybe obstructing the keeper. It looks like this one's going to get called back, but decent. Decent little passage of play, working the ball around the edge of the box there. And as halftime's called, we are 1 0 up. We're just on top in most of these shots. Oh, no, we're not in top in terms of the shots. Zhejiang have that, but everything else we are pretty much covered. I'm just going to say I'm pleased with how things are going. Keep it up. And as we always do, we'll give it 15 minutes. We'll get to the hour mark, and then we're going to have a look at how, different subs, how we can make changes, how we can try and improve the team. I think fitness will be the big one that we focus on, but there are a couple of match ratings there that aren't the best. All right, hour mark now. I'm just going to go with the players that whose condition isn't the best because we are in the early part of the season. So a couple of changes there. Hale will come on in midfield. We'll move him to a DLP. He's not as good a tackler. Uh, Chia Ru will come in as the inside forward on the left. And our pretty much star man for the day, Chin Ki, he'll come off and Bai Liang will come on at right back. I'm going to throw a demand more shout in there as well. If we can get a second goal, I think that'll pretty much seal it. But so far, it does look from the highlights at least like we have been relatively comfortable. But usually, those comfortable games are when you see like a 94th minute highlight coming through. Into the last 10 minutes now, we're going to just hit the man more. And we have seemed to take a foothold of the game in the second half. Most of the stats heading our way as we head into extra time. And at 92 minutes, they call full time. So it's a 1-0 victory. Not the most dominant performance, but a good win away from home to start the season. So I'm just going to say a good win, boys. Well done. Trying to keep that morale up as much as possible. 
and you think better performances are ahead of us for the season, but we do go into the top four to start off the year. Quite a few draws on the opening day. And I've just realized Hernan Crespo is actually the manager of Zhejiang, which is very interesting. He's had quite the career. He was at Parma, then Banfield, Defensa e Justicia, which I think is in Uruguay. No, Argentina, I take that back. Sao Paulo for eight years, then Zhejiang for the last couple of seasons. A decent little manager. He's not bad at all. But I want to show you guys the new stadium. So Magic Bet Editing, we're going to jump forward to the game against Shanghai now. All right, so jumping forward to the game against Shanghai Port, this is the first real look at the stadium, and it looks absolutely fantastic from what I can see here. Not the greatest angles or anything. We've just got it set to full match now, but look at the stands and still some expansion space in the corners you would think that we could probably build on in the next couple of seasons. Absolutely crazy that we have... Uh, brought the team up that much that they've been able to pay for a 30,000 seat stadium. It's not quite full, which is disappointing, but maybe that's our task now for the next couple of seasons is to really try and get uh, that stadium as full as humanly possible. But yeah, I just wanted to bring you guys a little bit of a look as to what the new stadium looks like, given how much like our finance has been tied to trying to get that set up in the last couple of seasons. All right, and jumping back into that match, we did actually win it 4-0, which is a great way to break in the new stadium in the league itself. Fantastic. I think it also puts us top of the division as well, which is very exciting. So we're going to give everyone a bit of praise, and we're just going to have a quick look. And it does indeed put us top of the league. Only on goal difference at the moment, but only two sides won their first two games, ourselves and Chongqing. So we are setting new bars each season, or to start this season anyway. Hopefully, that can continue throughout the rest of the year as well. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. That is the part that I appreciate the most. If you do want to help celebrate the new stadium, the new season, all the fantastic new signings, you can drop a like on this video. You can also subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date on all of our future videos, not just in this series, but all of our football manager content, all that sort of great stuff that's going to keep coming right up until the release of FM22, which feels absolutely crazy to say, FM22 at this point, but it is on the horizon. People are already thinking about it. More than anything, though, I just appreciate you guys watching along with me. As always, I've been Sean, and I'll see you all again in the mixer.